I wish I could give you a point blank answer on the best time to take vitamin D, but we have to parse out some interesting research to understand because in theory, it would make sense that we wouldn't want to take vitamin D at night because maybe it's coming from the sun and the sun wakes us up, but we have to get more granular. So I've got some interesting research here. So let's go ahead and dive right in. After today's video, I put a 50% off discount link for Haya Kids Multivitamins. I'm a dad, I've got two young kids, and I can attest to how difficult it is to get them to eat everything that's on their plate. I'm not suggesting that they're lacking in nutrition, but I do think that adding a good multivitamin can be fun and only really beneficial. So Haya is a multivitamin that is chewable, sweetened with monk fruit. So the kids get to have fun. Like our routine is, hey, get your jammies on and then you can have your vitamin. They love it. Like they think they're getting a treat and it's something that's nourishing for them. Plus it's establishing a good pattern. So I think as a dad, it's awesome. And Haya was created by two dads that saw a need in the marketplace and they saw a need that kids really, really needed. So anyhow, that link down below saves you 50% off your first order with Haya. You can check them out. They've got an awesome, awesome lineup and I think you'll really dig it and your kids will dig it too. And if they don't like them, they taste good and you can eat them. So when we first look at this, like we think, okay, we have circadian cues and environmental cues. In other words, like we have environmental cues from the sun and then we have cellular cues that are telling us, hey, like, uh, you know, if it's dark out, like it doesn't make sense to be getting a nutrient that we'd get from the sun. But I have some flaws with that theory because vitamin D takes a while to ultimately kind of synthesize in the body, right? So if we go out in the sun, it's not like we instantly increase our vitamin D levels. Like to get to that 25 hydroxy vitamin D, like we have multiple processes that occur in order to get there. And there's handoffs and there's like D2 to D3. Anyway, it's complicated, but it's not as immediate. Not to say that going out in the sun doesn't give you energy. I just think that that's much more a photobiomodulation thing. Like we can perceive and see in our cells, our mitochondria can actually receive signals from light, sort of like red light therapy can help with ATP production. Like going outside in the sun can give you energy, but it's probably not just from vitamin D. However, there's interesting literature to suggest that maybe taking vitamin D at night isn't best, but we have to, again, parse through the nonsense too. So we have to look at this study that was published in Brain Behavior and Immunity. It took a look at subjects that consumed 800 IUs of vitamin D or 4,300-ish IUs of vitamin D, okay? And they measured a particular melatonin metabolite in the urine called 6-SMT. This was able to give them a peek into how much melatonin they were producing. At three months, when taking melatonin at a higher dose, vitamin D level went up in the blood but 6-SMT went down, melatonin went down. This did not happen in the low dose group, only happened in the high dose group. After one year, this is what's sketchy, vitamin D levels came back down a little bit and 6-SMT, melatonin, went back up. Well, this sounds like a good thing. It sounds like the body's establishing things. What's interesting about this is that why did vitamin D levels start to come back down after being on the same dose for a year? That tells me that maybe synthetic vitamin D isn't the best thing. Perhaps because vitamin D is a hormone, is it like taking exogenous testosterone where if a guy takes it, he's gonna shut down his own production? I don't know. I'm just kind of talking out of the side of my mouth, but it raises those concerns because I've been concerned about synthetic vitamin D for a long time, which is why I've always been a fan of cod liver oil, getting it in a true bioavailable form, eating high amounts of eggs and fatty fish where I can get vitamin D in that way. Now, this isn't a video to bash vitamin D, so let's keep going. But if we look at a study that was published in medicine, it took a look at 120 people that had low levels of vitamin D. It gave them a really quick shot of 100,000 IUs of vitamin D. Almost immediately, there were improvements in energy, like their fatigue levels went down. Okay, well, I mean, something is happening there, right? Well, we have to remember that vitamin D has a hormonal cascade of different things. It impacts lipids, it impacts adipose tissue, impacts energy metabolism, impacts our uh, hormonal health, our sexual health, our brain health. So who knows? The energy could have just been metabolically deranged actions correcting themselves. It's correlative. We don't know for sure, and it's moderately subjective. But what we do know is that we do have circadian cues. And if this is a large bolus coming in, it does imply that, yeah, you were out in the sun. But there's another piece that we can look at to help us understand when we should take it. We do know that if you take vitamin D with a meal, particularly with monounsaturated fatty acids or polyunsaturated fatty acids, peak absorption is about 32% higher. 
So what I'm suggesting is, hmm, whole food forms of vitamin D, mackerel, sardines, anchovies, salmon, huh, interesting. In their bioavailable, already fat form, you're probably gonna get better absorption. So if you do take a vitamin D supplement, maybe it makes sense to take it with a meal. And if you start looking at the literature, you find, hey, if you take it earlier in the day, it seems to be a better subjective response. So maybe you take it with dinner and you have dinner a little bit earlier at maybe 5 p.m. But it brings the other question to mind. Well, how much vitamin D are you really trying to take? And something that I talk about all the time, do we wanna rely on a synthetic form of vitamin D that might deplete other things, might deplete our bioavailable retinol A, it might impact our ability to utilize vitamin D, who knows, like we saw in that initial study, who knows, right? So getting it from something like cod liver oil where you can still get an omega-3 vitamin A and vitamin D form might just make the most sense. But more importantly, maybe you should consider taking a lower dose of vitamin D and improving metabolic health so that the vitamin D levels restore a little bit naturally. Because I'm inclined to think that maybe we don't have a vitamin D issue here. Maybe we have a larger metabolic issue that is manifesting through a biomarker that we can see clearly, like our vitamin D levels. So we correct that vitamin D by taking a synthetic vitamin D, but are we actually fixing the issue? By taking a vitamin D, are we just masking the bigger problem where none of our symptomology really improves, just that number on the lab reading? So try taking a lower dose earlier in the day, but along with the proper nutrition that would go along with dietary vitamin D. A little bit of calcium, a little bit of omega-3s, a little bit of monounsaturated fats, maybe some avocados, maybe some macadamia nuts, something like that. But by all means, it's not worth it to take anything over like four or 5,000 IUs directly before bed. It seems as though that will decrease melatonin. As always, keep it locked in here on my channel. I'll see you tomorrow.